Hey there guys, this is Mrs. Bowers here. Uh, so I am adding a new video to my YouTube channel for some fraction support, okay? Uh, so today what I'm going to be showing you and reminding you of is how to name equivalent fractions and then we'll work on adding those fractions as well. So we'll start off simple by adding just fractions, and then the further we go along, um, we are going to kind of do like a progression of easy to more difficult. So we'll start with some basic fractions, and then we'll move into some mixed numbers. This is all the work that we've been doing the past week and a half, kind of all compiled into one video. All right, so let's start off with the fractions two-fifths plus three-eighths. So we can't begin right away, you just jump right into adding, because the units or the denominators are not alike. They are not like units. So I have to make them like units before I can add. Now I taught my fifth graders two different ways to do this. You can either draw a picture or use your knowledge of multiplicative expressions to do this. So let me show you what I mean. So first let's draw a picture. So I'll show two fifths. Please forgive me, I am not Pablo Picasso. All right, so here is one fifth. Here is two fifths. Beautiful. Next, I'll draw a model to represent three eighths. Oopsies. Let's see, erase me my pen back. There we go. Now I'll do three eighths. There we go. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to shade in three one eighth, two eighths, and three eighths. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer over the top of my models. So let's take a look at two fifths. I'm going to layer over the top of my fifths, eighths. Beautiful. So it was once fifths, when I layer eighths on top of it, now I have fortieths. I'll do the same thing with my eighths. I'm going to layer over fifths. What was once eighths is now fortieths. So my new denominator for my fractions are going to have the denominator of 40. And now what was once 2 fifths is actually 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 fortieths. 3 eighths has now become 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 fortieths. When I add, I'm just going to add across my numerators to find the total, which is 31 fortieths. That's one way that you can rename and get equivalent fractions by drawing a picture. Now, if drawing a model ain't your thing and you can do this numerically in your head, let's take a look at what this would look like. All right, so some parents, this might sound familiar to you because these are some terminologies uh, that we learned as kids. So we're going to find the least common multiple to come up with a common denominator. So I'll take my fifths and my eighths. I'm going to list out or just think about the multiples of each of those numbers. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Sorry, I ran out of room. Or we got our 8s. We have 8, 24, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 40. Right, parents? So this looks familiar to us, right? So 40 is the least common multiple of 5 and 8. So 40 is now what my new denominator is going to be. So when I rewrite them, I'm going to rewrite them with my new common denominator. My least common multiple is 40. So now we're going to use our knowledge of basic multiplication facts. 
uh, which was a skill that was taught in the third grade. So parents, if your student is struggling with doing this next step, it's because they are gonna have to practice their math facts at home, okay? So let me think. I went from fifths to fortieths. So I know in my head that five times eight is 40. So whatever I do to my denominator, I must do to my numerator as well. So if five times eight is 40, two times eight is 16. And I'll do the same thing with three eighths, right? So let's switch my color marker to blue. There we go. I went from eighths to fortieths. So in my head, I'm thinking eight times five is 40. So three times five is 15. There I have my equivalent fractions for two fifths and for three eighths. When I add to get the sum or the total, voila, okay? So I just taught you two different strategies that I taught your students as well uh, to rename, to make like units, and then to add fractions as well. Let's try another example because practice makes permanent. Now we're going to take a, uh, some time to subtract fractions, but using the exact same steps. So we'll take a look at 5 sixths minus 3 fourths. So this time, instead of talking you through every step, I'm just going to solve so you guys can watch and listen and follow along. So I can either draw a picture. I can draw 5 sixths and 3 fourths and layer them over the top of each other or I can do it numerically. Now clearly, I am a, I'm very proficient in this, so I can do it really quickly numerically. Like I know in my head already that the least common multiple of four and six is 12. But for students who cannot do that as quickly as I can, they can list the multiples of four and six to find the least common multiple. So we'll do 6, 12, 18, 24, and that list goes on and on. Then we'll do 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. You'll notice if you continue these lists, though, we're going to have more common multiples. But in this case, we want to find the least common multiple. Alrighty, 12 is our least common multiple, okay? The least common multiple now becomes our common denominator. So I'm going to ask myself, okay, Mrs. Bowers, I got from 6 to 12 by partitioning <clears throat> into um, halves. So 6 times 2 is 12. What is 5 times 2? 10. Now, uh, we went from fourths to twelfths. Four times three is twelve, so three times three is nine. Now, this is just plain old normal fourth grade subtraction of fractions. Ten twelfths minus nine twelfths is one twelfth. Okay? So let's debrief. Let's kind of uh, think about the work that we just did together, right? So first we made like units and we do this when we can draw a picture or we can find the least common multiple when you list the multiples of the denominators. All right, now I'm going to quickly jump ahead to something a little bit more challenging. This is what um, I taught your students today. So we're going to apply these same skills of renaming fractions to make equivalent fractions and then adding or subtracting. Today I taught them how to do this work but with mixed numbers instead. So let's take a look at an example that we did today in class. Two and three fourths plus eight and seven eighths. Okay, first thing I ask my students is, are these denominators the same? And they'll go, no, no, it's not. But then I ask them, but are they related units? And they'll all say, yes, 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 because eight is a multiple of four, or four is a factor of eight. So again, we can use that process of listing out the multiples of four and of eight to find the least common multiple, which in this case is eight, which is great for us because this fraction here is already in eighths. So I'll just need to rename my two fourths. So let me just erase this really quick. All right, let's rename my fourths as eighths. So I'm gonna write it vertically. So I'm gonna ask myself how many 
eighths are equivalent to three fourths. So I'll do this work. Well, four times two is eight. So what is three times two? And that is six. So here's my equivalent fraction to three fourths. Alrighty, so now here's the part where I might lose some people. So try to stay with me here, okay? So there's two ways that you can add mixed numbers. I taught your students two different strategies today. One is to think of it as a number bond or like unit form. So we can add our whole numbers first, right? It's kind of, kind of like, like the easier way to do it, I'd say. Um, so we'll add the whole numbers first. So 2 plus 8 is 10. And then we'll add the fractions next. So we'll think 6 eighths plus 7 eighths is 15 eighths. And for right now, I'm going to have them leave this improper fraction as an answer. That's okay with me. Um, I know some parents have asked if... Um, I want them to start simplifying fractions or renaming improper fractions as mixed numbers. Um, I'm not going to push them to do that quite yet because I want them to have this foundational understanding first, okay? So I know that 15 eighths is an improper fraction, but for now we're just going to keep it like that. Um, that's okay with me for now, okay? Now, a more challenging way to think of this, and I think that this approach or this strategy um, really pushes students to really think outside the box here. So it's kind of like a more challenging way to think about this, but I feel like a lot of my students are ready for this kind of thinking work. Uh, so kind of watch uh, uh, what I'm going to do here. So we already named three-fourths as an equivalent fraction of six eighths, right? So this time when I add, I'm actually going to try to make life a little bit easier for me by taking my eight and seven eighths and turning it into a nice even whole number with no fractions. So today I asked my students to look at seven eighths. And I asked them how many more eighths are needed to make a whole number? So a lot of kids would say, oh, you need one more eighth to make one whole, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my life a little easier, and I'm going to make my eight and seven eighths a nice, even whole number. But by doing so, I need to do some kind of borrowing from my other add end. An add end is just a fancy schmancy way of saying a number we're adding, okay? So I need one more eighth to give to 7 eighths to make this 8 and 7 eighths a whole number up to 9, right? So if I take 1 eighth out of my 6 eighths to give to my 7 eighths, what I'm left with here is 2 and 5 eighths, right? Would you agree that 2 and 5 eighths plus 1 eighth is 2 and 6 eighths? Right, okay. So now I can just do some really quick adding here. I'm just going to add my whole numbers, which is 2 plus 9. 2 plus 9 is 11. And I was left with 5 eighths. So I'm going to add my 5 eighths to 11. And there's my final answer. Okay? So this is kind of just like a recap of the work that we did this week with math. I hope that you find this video helpful. And I am going to try to do better in the future with posting some more, more recent videos. Um, a lot of my old videos, they still um, are applicable for sure because I'm still teaching the same topics and using the